welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is a paid video for Simon of Thailand. And you might remember Simon from one of my videos. He came to Japan, we bought and explored two together. If you haven't seen that video, link in the description, check it out. That's certainly one of my best videos, and it's one of my favorite videos for a couple different reasons, one of which is that in that video, for the first and only time here in Japan, I actually came across a fake Rolex for sale, so that was kind of weird. I'll also put a couple of links to some collection reviews that I did for Simon. He's got a massive collection. If you're interested to see what kind of watches he's working with, be sure to check those out. All right, Simon writes, Hi Austin, another vid. I'm in the market for another Rolex for my collection. The old root beer, Clint Eastwood, really appeals to me, but so many say get a Daytona and Zenith is predicted as being highly collectible in the future. What do you think? Well, the Zenith movement Daytonas are highly collectible now. I mean, the steel ones are going for, here in Japan, 30,000 plus, so they are already highly collectible, really expensive. Now, he sent a couple of screen grabs of a couple of pieces he found on Chrono24. The first is uh, GMT root beer, and this is a 16713 root beer, and it's on an oyster bracelet. They also made the root beer on a Jubilee bracelet, which uh, I prefer that. I think it's a better aesthetic. He also sent this screen capture of a Rolex Daytona 16523 with the Zenith movement. This is a white dialed watch. And you can see that the prices are not too dissimilar, all right? 9,000 pounds for the root beer, and about 10,000 for the Zenith two-tone. All right, well, let's first focus on the GMT root beer. So my opinion on the root beer has evolved. And when I first got into Rolexes, what drew me to Rolex were the steel professional Submariners, GMTs, Explorers, Explorer twos, these typically black dialed all steel adventure watches. And uh, you, you think, wow, uh, brown dial, uh, it's pretty ugly. I don't know if I'd wanna wear that. And that's how I felt, you know? And it took a couple of years and after seeing hundreds of GMTs and subs and, you know, various pretty much standard uh, professional fare, you start maybe wanting something different and wanting something a little bit more unique. I think that's what draws people perhaps to precious metal watches or, or two-tone watches, but you know, revisiting the GMT root beer, I sort of started to like it, and it went from being a fugly brown-dialed watch to sort of a funky, cool, retro-looking watch. And look, there's a thin line between a dated and outdated-looking watch and retro chic, and where you think the root beer falls um, between those two you know, extremes, I think, uh, depends on the person. I like it, but it certainly is a product of the 70s, um, as Simon indicates, as known as the Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood had one in the 70s. It was apparently his favorite Rolex. It was in three of his movies. And, uh, you know, it just looks like something out of the 70s. And, you know, above all, it's just so different than, say, a 16710, a standard GMT Master II, and that's sort of the beauty of it. But there's something funky about it, and um, yeah, I like it. Would I ever do it? Uh, would I ever get one? Well, it's one of the two two-tone watches that that I really like and, and I tell myself I could wear in theory. Now, would I actually wear one? I really prefer the steel pieces, so probably not, but you know, it's right up there with uh, the with, uh, Bluesy 16613, the Submariner Bluesy, which I think has a beautiful, probably one of the most beautiful dials, period. I mean, that is a beautiful dial. Whereas the Root Beer, I wouldn't call it a beautiful dial. I would call it a funky, cool dial, all right? And I always thought that those two watches would work really well in, in a two-piece collection together for someone who loves two-tone pieces. They're kind of over the top, so 
I would probably want a third piece that's a little bit more toned down, something like an Oyster Perpetual, a Datejust, uh, an Explore. But uh, yeah, those two watches, I, I really respect them. If I wouldn't want to get one or both of them, I at least respect them greatly. And um, you know, Simon, it looks like you're leaning towards the the GMT Master II root beer. I mean, it says it really appeals to me, but people are telling you to get the, the Daytona with a Zenith movement. Um, all right, this is tough because I'm looking at, you know, this ad right here, and, and perhaps you're you're being drawn towards the, uh, the two-tone version of the Zenith, which is a lot more affordable than the All Steel. I mean, the All Steel here in Japan, like I said, it's, it's north of 30,000 yen. So... There's a couple ways I would answer this question. Um, which would I prefer to have? Well, look, you guys know how I love GMTs, so I'd have to go with the root beer. Um, I love the function of the GMT. It's my favorite function. You know, you can use the bezel for its intended purpose, or you can use it to time things. It doesn't look so different than a watch like this, you know, if you're talking a 16710, but it's got that fourth hand, which is kind of freakishly cool. It's, it's different. And show somebody a GMT or a GMT Master II sometime and, and point out that fourth hand and they'll probably go, whoa, that's, what is that? You know, and, and I love that. And so that's probably the way I would go. And let me just say, if I did, I would be inclined to go with a nipple dial. Now that's probably going to be something you'd find on a 16753. Uh, the problem with those older watches is that the dials seem to go. You know, the cheapest one in Japan at the moment, it's got a lot of like red showing through it. It's almost like the paint has chipped away or fallen off or worn off of the dial. And and it's almost like there's uh, a red base under the the brown of the dial that's showing through. It's It's very odd and it's not something I like. And so... That seems to be an issue with those those older root beers, you know, the 16753s. And, you know, if you if you do go for a nipple dial, which look, a root beer is is cool because it's so unique. And then on top of that, a nipple dial, that's just so cool. You know, in my opinion, I think that's just it's uh it's it's funky cool. All right, it's funky cool. Uh, which is different than cool cool, all right? But uh yeah, so, so a nipple dial, but you have to be careful because if you look around those indices a lot, sometimes you'll see little little chips of, I guess, some of that dial paint coming off and, and that red will be showing through. And uh, I wouldn't call it tropical, but it's, it's an issue with the 16753s. I think when it comes to root beers, look, they're, they're tough to come by and it's tough to come by one that's probably gonna check off all your boxes. I mean, if you're talking about a 16710 GMT Master II, I can find you one that checks off your boxes today, all right? Um, box and papers, unpolished. I mean, if you've got the cash, we can find it for you. There are a lot of options out there. That's not the case with uh, the root beer. So it's one of those watches you sort of put in the back of your mind and as you continue your journey and, and you're shopping here and there and you go into shops, uh, Perhaps you'll you'll find the, the the piece that you're looking for. And look, what would what would be ideal? Uh, nipple dial, um, jubilee bracelet. Of course, box and papers would be great. Unpolished would be great. You know, you put all those together, uh, you're probably talking a very expensive piece unless you're getting it from like a a, a a first owner that's just kind of trying to unload it because it maybe needs a service or something. That would be a dream. Um, so one thing I got to point out is, is you could use that Jubilee bracelet. If you get one on a Jubilee on your bluesy, I know you've got a Submariner bluesy one, six, six, one, three, and that could be fun. You know, you could switch bracelets back and forth. Um, I mean, I suppose you could use your, your oyster bracelet on the root beer. If you got the Jubilee braceleted root beer, but of course it's going to have the the wetsuit extension, which would bug the hell out of me. Um, so, you know, if you do go for a later root beer, then I then I I would consider getting getting it on an oyster bracelet and then going to RSC and and buying uh, a, a Jubilee bracelet, which would be expensive, but um, 
that's probably what I would I would do and hopefully you can do it um, hopefully you know the later uh, 167 uh, 16713 is you know you typically see them on the oyster bracelets let's just hope that they came on uh, Jubilee bracelets as well. I guess you could call an RSC and perhaps ask about that. But uh, so that's maybe what I would do, right? Just one of those things I would put in the back of my mind. And if you're faced with with one and the right one, that's when you jump on it. It's not one of those things you just you know go out and buy because um, most of the ones in Japan at the moment are kind of lacking. All right. Now, having said that, let's just look at these two pieces he presented me with. Um, and you know, you've got this. Uh, you know, 9,000 pound GMT and, and this 10,000 pound, only a thousand pounds more for a Daytona. Now I gotta say, I mean, I'm not partial towards the Daytona, but it's a better buy. I mean, it's a Daytona. Now, will it ever catch up to the prices of the steel Zenith movement Daytonas? No, a lot of people think, they, they say things like the two-tone are good buys right now, almost like sort of indicating that they believe that those prices will catch up in the future to the steel ones. Well, I don't agree with that. I think as the steel prices rise, um, the two-tone prices will rise, but the two-tone prices I don't think will ever catch the steel prices. That you know, makes people crazy sometimes and they, they think, you know, how can a steel piece go for more than a, a piece with gold in it? Makes perfect sense to me. I mean, you know, it's like looking at the Mona Lisa and saying, well, you know, it's worth about six bucks. All the paint and the wood and the canvas, I mean, it's worth about six bucks. It's not the parts, it's it's what the sum of its parts make. And and that's why, you know, Rolex steel, when it's made into a Rolex, is, is more valuable than uh, very often Rolex gold. The argument holds, <laughs> I guess, if you're planning on getting these watches and melting them down for their raw materials. Okay, in that case, there's no better buy than a, than a two-tone. But, uh, but if you're lucky enough to like and love two-tones, this is a great buy. This is a great buy. Um, for me, uh, I'm not into two-tones, but I would make an exception for a bluesy and I'd make an exception for a, a root beer. So I would go for this 9,000 pound um, root beer. If I had to choose, again, it would depend on um, some things I'd want to find out if I could get a Jubilee bracelet for it. I'd ask myself if I wanted to hold out for a for a nipple dial, which why not? You know, um, there's no rush, and uh, and so I think really between these two, I think it, it the yeah the Zenith I think is a is is a better buy, but I would prefer personally to have have the root beer, uh, which is going to go up in the future more. Well, it's a great question, and I and I don't know, but I would say the the Daytonas. Are a little bit more cool cool whereas the the root beer is like I said it's retro cool it's sort of funky cool you know I kind of I kind of uh, I'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent here but I look at the root beer kind of like when I had my mullet and mustache when I first started my YouTube channel I mean did I think I was the height of fashion? No, man, I was just playing around it was just fun it was it was it was funky cool it was sort of I don't know what I was doing but but I wouldn't take myself too seriously. And I, and I think that's the thing about the, the, the root beer. It's sort of the, the mullet mustache of the Rolexes. It's funky. It might, I mean, it's not gonna hold a candle, you know, really truly aesthetically in terms of coolness to, you know, a 16710 or a 14060 or a, a date sub. It's different, it's different. And, but that's why you're buying it because it's different and it's funky different. And uh, it would fit great in your collection, I gotta say. Let's just be honest, I mean, it's the steel Daytona, Zenith Daytonas that are, are the ones to have. So, again, this 30,000 plus, okay? Uh, are they gonna continue to go up? I already think those prices are a little bit inflated. Um, will they continue to go up in the future? I don't know. Um, I, I, would, I would bet they would over either of these two-tone pieces because I think two-tones just always, uh, you know, they just are not as popular, especially when it comes to the steel pieces. But look, I mean, in, in 20 years, things could just change, right? And, and, and gold and precious metal in the watch, who knows what trends are going to be like. They could just shoot up. And then whoever, you know, uh, 
you know, rejected the idea of a $30,000 steel zenith in favor of this, uh, you know, two-tone zenith at, at 10,000 pounds could make out like a bandit. We really don't know what the, what the future holds, but um, I'm pretty firmly in the camp of steel, steel. I love steel. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so let Simon know what you think. I feel like I went back and forth. I mean, personally speaking, I'm all about the the root beer. Um, as far as these two go, I, I'm I think the the Zenith movement two tone is is a great buy. Um, but but again, if you're looking for investment, I think it's the Steel Daytona with the Zenith movement. But you know the boat has been missed, all right? You know, they're 30,000 plus, and, and can they go a lot higher? That's a good question, I don't know. So uh, thank you for the question um, there. Look, it seems to me that, uh, Simon, you you are sort of leaning towards the, the root beer, but you're sort of getting sidetracked because people are telling you to get a Daytona. Um, what I would do is is I would put that, that um, idea of getting getting the the root beer in the back of your mind and just have have the money to pounce on the right one when it comes about and uh, until then you know you might just set aside the money and and if you come across either piece that check off your boxes i e box papers unpolished you know you might say that's the one okay so instead of letting the piece guide your decision let the example you come across guide your decision Anyway, hope that helps. Uh, let Simon know what you would do. Both beautiful pieces. Um, but I'm a GMT man. What can I say? Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.